Please welcome Michael Sheen, Forrest Whitaker, Oprah Winfrey, Stanley Tucci, and Peter Sarsgaard. moment in The Blind Side when Sandra Bullock, playing a tough woman who gives no excuse for her behavior and who tries not to show her emotions, is told by a young man that she has taken in that this is the first time that he has laid down on a bed. And everything you need to know about how that character feels is in her eyes. I had the great pleasure of directing Sandy in the film Hope Floats, and I got to see firsthand the beauty of her work which she does with such ease that some miss the delicacies and the complexities inside of it. But the breadth and the depth of her heart, which she allows us to share, is that intangible, magical quality that you can never miss in a Sandra Bullock performance. Every British Prime Minister should end up in a relationship with a wonderful queen. <laughs> I had that privilege in the Oscar-nominated Best Picture where Helen Mirren won for Best Actress for her portrayal of Elizabeth II. Now, I spent a lot of time on the set with Helen, and after a while, a thought kept reoccurring. Is it wrong to be so wildly attracted to a queen? <laughs> I mean, she was Elizabeth, but then after a few hours, uh, the makeup would start to wear off, and her spiderweb tattoo would start to appear on her hand, which, of course, only made her even hotter. <laughs> Royalty with a tattoo, brilliant. And this past year, she somehow matched that amazing performance with another one, playing the Countess Sophia in The Last Station. She showed us a woman's guile and heart and pride and desperation, a portrayal that only comes from an actress with immense talent and one who is never afraid to take a risk. It is that combination, Helen, of talent and courage and, yes, that tattoo, that makes you our queen, our countess, and an Oscar nominee. Congratulations. Carrie Mulligan. Um, Carrie Mulligan has fallen in love with me twice, actually. Uh, not with me personally, but with the characters I played. Uh, once on stage opposite her, and then once in the film, which she's nominated tonight. I'm afraid I treated her badly. I'm sorry, Carrie, I should have told you that I was married. But uh, <laughs> out of her amazing depth, grace, and intelligence, came unforgettable portraits of heartbreak and complexity. Her performance in an education is indeed just that. We are lucky that she is so young because we have a lifetime of her work to look forward to. Being honored is still strange to you, I imagine, but given what she's already shown us, it's something you're gonna to have to get used to, darling. Gabourie Sidibe. She was a student trying to earn some money to go to college. On Monday, she skipped school to audition for a movie called Precious. On Tuesday, they called her back to meet the director, Lee Daniels. On Wednesday, she got the part. And tonight, she is sitting at the Academy Awards in the same category as Meryl Streep. I tell you, if that isn't a Hollywood fairy tale, what is? The authenticity, Gabby, with which you played the harsh, brutal moments in our movie Precious, where did that come from? The transformation from your own, your own joyous, positive, radiant, fun self 
to the heartbreaking despair of that girl, Precious. Where did you learn how to do that? When we look at you, we see a true American Cinderella on the threshold of a brilliant new career. And Precious is but the first of many adjectives coming your way. And they are all great. Congratulations, Gabby Cinderella. Meryl, what can I say? That like most people in the world, I have been in love with you for years. That the two movies we did together were the highlights of my career. <laughs> that, <clears throat> that you were brilliant in both of them, as you are in everything. That the mantle of most acclaimed film actress of our time could not be worn with more grace and humility. But everyone already knows that. What they don't know is your kindness, your collaborative nature, your great good humor. Those things make you a dream to work with and a wonderful friend. It is in the area of awards and accolades, however, that you show a certain, how can I say this, a certain selfishness <laughs> that is unseemly. <laughs> that is why I have spearheaded a movement in the academy to cap the number of nominations per actor at 16. <laughs> Which means that this could be the last time that anyone will have to stand up here and say, despite their personal feelings, that Meryl Streep is quite simply the best. Ladies and gentlemen, a two-time Academy Award recipient who was last year's winner for actor in a leading role, Sean Penn. I, uh, I never became an official member of the Academy, but the Academy and I do have in common that we managed to n neglect to acknowledge the same actress in our own ways in two years running. So I, I, I am going to start fresh with the Academy and, and uh, acknowledge these wonderful actresses. Uh, here are the nominees for Best Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role. Sandra Bullock, The Blind Side. <laughs> Helen Mirren, The Last Station. <laughs> Carrie Mulligan, In an Education. <laughs> Gabourey Sidibe, for Precious. <laughs> and Meryl Streep, for Julia and Julia. And the winner is Sandra Bullock in the Brown Side. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Sandra Bullock. Did I really earn this, or did I just wear you all down? Um, I, I would like to thank the Academy for allowing me in the last month to have the most incredible ride with rooms full of artists that I see tonight and that I've worked with before and I hope to work with in the future, who inspire me and blaze trails for us, four of them that I've fallen deeply in love with, I share this night with and I share this award with. Um, Gabby, I love you so much. You are exquisite. You are beyond words to me. Carrie, your grace and your elegance and your beauty and your talent makes me sick. Um, <laughs> Helen, I, I feel like we are family through family and I, I don't have the words to express just what I think of you and Meryl. You know what I think of you and you're such a good kisser. <laughs> 
I have so many people to thank for my good fortune in this lifetime, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, I know. To the family that allowed me to play them, the Tui family, I know they're in here, and you'll probably hear her in a minute. Maybe not. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to the family that made this film that gave me the opportunity to do something different. John Lee Hancock, Gil Netter, Alcon, Warner Brothers, the actors, everyone who's shown me kindness when it wasn't fashionable, I thank you. To everyone who was mean to me uh, when it wasn't felt like George Clooney threw me in a pool years ago, I'm still holding a grudge. But there's so many people to thank, not enough time, so I would like to thank what this film was about for me, which are the moms that take care of the babies and the children no matter where they come from. Those moms and parents never get thanked. Uh, I, in particular, uh, fail to thank one. So, if I can take this moment to thank Helga B. Um, for not letting me ride in cards with boys till I was 18, because she was right, I would have done what she said I was gonna do. <laughs> for t making me practice every day when I got home, piano, ballet, whatever it is I wanted to be. She said to be an artist, you had to practice every day, and for reminding her daughters that there's no race, no religion, no class system, no color, nothing, no sexual orientation that makes us better than anyone else. We are all deserving of love. So, to that trailblazer who allowed me to have that and this and this. I thank you so much for this opportunity that I share with these extraordinary women and my lover, Meryl Streep. Thank you.